we get more on that. As I was saying, the Australian Electoral Commission uh, has called in the former Federal Police Chief Mick Kelty for an independent investigation into the missing votes there. They will go ahead with declaring the result in the coming days and after that there'll be a 40-day period for an appeal to be lodged by either a voter, a candidate or the Electoral Commission itself may decide to do this. Lodge a petition with the Court of Disputed Returns. Someone watching very keenly all of this is the man you can see on your screen there, Scott Ludlam, the Senator for Western Australia, who on the first count of votes missed out on re-election uh, for that Senate position. Senator, thank you for joining us. You say the AEC should delay declaring the result until this Keelty investigation uh, is done, but yep. we heard from the Electoral Commission this afternoon they're still going to go ahead and declare the result. That is what they, they have to do under, the, um, under their rules. So. Um, under, under what permission could they delay the result? Um, they were originally intending to declare the results after the 8th. We were told originally that the count would go for three weeks. As it turns out, it's only gone for two. So the AEC does have the latitude to, to delay um, declaring the result, and I think that's what they should do. They've done the right thing and called an investigation. Uh, they should let that run its course. That should happen very quickly. If it turns out they've lost a box of votes behind the back of a couch, then include them and then declare the result with the entire ballot rather than leaving a hole in it. Because the other point here too is that the new Senate doesn't take its place until July next year. There's yeah. actually plenty of time uh, for this to be sorted out. Well, it depends on your definition of plenty of time. Uh, there's a whole set of candidates who aren't certain uh, where their lives are going for the next six years. Mm. Uh, I think the main thing you would want to do before this winds up in court would be to see if those votes uh, can be recovered. Uh, if Mr Kilty is able to work out what the paper trail was, uh, where the kind of chain of command was and where they are, that would make the whole situation a lot simpler than if you declare a ballot that you're almost certain will be contested in the High Court. That could take months to resolve. Now, you've had uh, scrutineers, of course, uh, as part of this recount process yeah. watching, and, and you have raised concerns about some votes also um, going into the wrong pile. Um, it, it, talk me through a bit more about your concerns there. No, I haven't raised concerns. Our scrutineers have done what you hope they would do, uh, and so have those for Palmer and uh, for the ALP, for that mm. matter. This is what's happened. It's obviously a much more highly scrutinised uh, ballot than it was on election night and in the week or week or two following the election. Inevitably you find a handful of votes here and there uh, and over the course of two and a half weeks, 1.3 million ballots, there are, there are more than a few hundred out of place. So I don't have concerns per se. I think this is the reason you have appeal rights and the ability to recount these things. This is now a much more highly scrutinised ballot. Uh, if they can find that missing batch or batches, then you'd, you'd be able to say you'd had real confidence in the result. But on the, the fact that this recount has produced different results along the process, uh, originally your concern was over the, the 14 vote margin at a, at a yeah. pivotal point of the count. Um, have what your scrutiny has told you led you to be more confident about retaining the seat? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's votes going every which way. Uh, the, our scrutineers have certainly found dozens over the course of the last two and a half weeks. I, I believe that the ALP and Palmer scrutineers have found many on their side as well. We don't know, and we won't know until those missing votes are found and added to the total and then the result can be declared. If the Electoral Commission does go ahead and declare the result on Monday, despite your um, uh, suggestion that they delay it, yeah. what then will you do? It, it, will you wait and see what that result is, or will you regardless go ahead and uh, lodge an appeal with the Court of Disputed Returns? I'd have to take advice, David. Uh, we'd be in uncharted waters. Uh, I think it would depend partly on the outcome if there's a very clear margin that's opened up one way or the other. But I think you could almost guarantee that somebody would. Well, what the AEC is delivering is a result that would be almost certainly contested. If they have a bit of latitude up their sleeves, I think they should wait and then, uh, and then make the declaration once you've got the whole count. One thing I will say, though, is that we have been justified and vindicated in our appeal and our call for recounting this ballot, as you've seen. That it turns out there were hundreds of votes in the wrong spot. So. Just picking up what you just said there, it's almost guaranteed that someone will seek to appeal this. Uh, by that you mean either the Greens, the Palmer Party or possibly the Electoral Commission itself. That's what appears to be in the Electoral Commissioner's press uh, statement. They've said that they may refer themselves effectively mm. to the court. 
Uh, but if you go back a week or so, the ALP had vowed to challenge this in the Court of Disputed Returns before uh, this batch of 1375 votes went missing. So it was looking to us as though it was going to end up in the courts anyhow. At the end of the day, um, some sort of appeal then would seem likely as a result of all of this. How likely do you think a rerun of the, the, the entire Senate election in WA might be? Look, I believe this afternoon Anthony Green has posited that uh, as a possibility. So uh, I'll leave that for others. I think for me that's kind of the last resort. That's going to be an expensive exercise. Uh, Australians don't like going to elections months apart, particularly not on the kind of accounting error that might be involved here. But one thing I will say is that I understand Clive Palmer this afternoon has been saying that is, that is corruption, that the AEC is trying to rig the election outcome. And to that I would say, seriously, mate, stop being such a sook. Let people get on with the job. Uh, if it's an accounting error, let's give the investigation time to find the votes and not accuse people of corruption. Parliamentary privilege actually doesn't apply unless you're in the chamber, and this gentleman is not. Well, uh, he will be soon, as we've seen this afternoon, the recount in the lower house seat of Fairfax has now determined that Clive Palmer is the winner by 53 yeah. seats. Can I just ask for your reaction at a, at a political level to the fact that Clive Palmer is himself going to be in Parliament? Oh, good for him. He won a free and fair election. I wish I had a billion dollars to spend on my campaign, but I don't. Uh, but the fact is that that uh, seat has been recounted. He's been declared the, the winner. I would just ask him, I guess, to read in the first chapter of the, of the materials that they give you when you get elected, the bit about parliamentary privilege and accusing people of corruption. It's pretty serious stuff. So, you, OK, but uh, he's not in Parliament when he's making that accusation. That's right. You clearly think he's, um, he's gone far too far. Um, what then do you put this missing vote episode down to? Is it simply a clerical error? Uh, in the Senate? Yes, in the Senate. I actually don't know. Uh, we, we felt a, quite surprised by this. The AEC had told us that they were expecting to close out the count, the main part of the count in Western Australia today or tomorrow. Then out of the blue, uh, this announcement that they've lost a batch of votes. So I don't know what to put it down to. There's nothing in the uh, AEC's press statement to indicate what's behind it. Uh, if there is, for example, uh, any, if Mr Kilty uncovers any signs of wrongdoing or fraud, I believe the police should immediately be called in. But in the meantime, it may simply be that there's a step missing in the paper trail. That's why my call on the AEC uh, is don't declare this thing until you're absolutely certain that those votes no longer exist. Can I just finally ask you, uh, on a policy front... Uh, That'd the, make a nice change. Yes, Go ahead. On the NBN, there's yeah. been this debate over the last week uh, about Huawei. Um, the government has reaffirmed the blanket ban on its involvement in the rollout of the NBN. Where, where do you stand on that? Are you comfortable with it? Yeah, to be perfectly frank with you, I think you've got to take the advice of the security agencies. Uh, I've not uh, had the ASIO briefing that the government and the opposition have, have taken up. I know the opposition, when they were in opposition before they won government, uh, had condemned the government for locking Huawei out of the process. But the fact is, uh, for a piece of critical infrastructure like the NBN, and particularly those, uh, those exchange points, you do have to be very careful with your choice of vendor. If that's what our agencies are telling us, then that, that's why they're there. That's why we pay them to provide this advice to us. Greens communications spokesman, uh, Scott Ludlam, Senator, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks, David.